Hi, hello and welcome back to F1 Challenge VB. My name is Mephisto and our epic journey through the history of Formula 1 continues today with the second round of the 1970 season, the Spanish Grand Prix. It was held on the 19th of April, it had 22 entries, 16 of them took part in the race with 11 ending up retiring. The race was held over 90 laps and was completed in 2 hours, 10 minutes and 58 seconds. Brabham started the race from pole but retired on lap 61 after blowing his engine. Holmes started from second but retired on lap 10 with a faulty ignition. Stewart was third on the grid. Beltois was fourth but retired on lap 31 with an engine failure. Rodriguez was fifth on the grid but he withdrew from the race on lap 14. And Chris Amon started the race from sixth but retired on lap 10 with an engine problem. In the chaos, Stewart moved from third into the lead of the race to win the Spanish Grand Prix from McLaren, who climbed from 11th into 2nd and crossed the line one lap after Stewart. Andretti climbed up from 16th into 3rd, he was one lap down as well. Graham Hill went from 15th to 4th, he was also one lap down. And Gavin went from 14th to 5th, he was two laps down and he was the last person to complete 90% of race distance. Surtees would have been 6th, however he retired on lap 76 with a gearbox problem and this means that he did not complete 90% of race distance. The fastest man of the race was Brabham who posted a time of 1 minute 24.3 on lap 19. Welcome to the exciting Harama circuit where a lap starts off with a long run down into turn 1, Nuvolari, a medium speed right-hander, this is followed immediately by Fangio, a slow right-hander. Next is Varzi, a fast right-hand kink that leads into Le Mans, a slow double apex left-hander. This is followed by Farina, a tight right-hand hairpin. Pegaso is next and it is a medium speed left-hander. After a fairly long straight, we come into Ascari, a medium speed right-hander that leads into Portago, a double apex right-hander. Next are the Bugatti S's and they lead into a tight left-hand hairpin. Up next is Monza, a slow to medium double apex right-hander, which leads into the final corner of the track, Tunnel, a high speed right-hander that brings us around onto the main street and that is a lap around the Harama circuit. And here we are in qualifying for the Spanish Grand Prix coming out of the final corner to try and set a fastest lap where I go a little bit wide, touch the curbing which throws the car off balance, cause it to flip all over the place. I land in the uh, pit, pit lane there and well I decided to end the qualifying there. I didn't want to continue anymore because that was kind of a scary little incident so that is it for qualifying. And here we are now on the grid for the Spanish Grand Prix. Unfortunately, once again, I will not be able to show you any replays in this race as we take a look at the previous Grand Prix winners. Andy Hayes has actually won, so hopefully his son Oliver will be able to do just as well. But yeah, I will not be able to show you any replays this race either because again, the game cra was crashing whilst I was trying to reload. Anyway, Rinti starting from pole with Beltois in second. Ari Pescarol of 3rd, 4th, Jackie X, 5th, Pedro Rodriguez and rounding off the top 6 is Ignacio Giunti. Then in 17th, 7th, sorry, we have Clay Regazzoni followed by Jackie Stewart in 8th, Jack Brabham is 9th followed by Danny Holm in 10th. Then in 11th we have Jackie Oliver followed by Chris Amon in 12th, Andrea Diadamich is 13th, 14th Graham Hill, 15th Fittipaldi, 16th Pierce Courage, Rolf Stommelen 17th, Bruce McLaren 18th, 19th is Mario Andretti, 20th Peter de Klerk, 23rd, 21st George Eaton, Johnny Servoz Gavin 22nd, 30s 23rd, Peter Gethin 24th, 25th is Silvio Moser, 26th Joe Siffert, 27th John Miles Dan Gurney, 28th, 29th Ronnie Peterson, 30th Hubert Hanna, Alex Toller Roig, uh, 31st, and Andy Higg, Oliver Higgs, sorry, obviously starting from 32nd since we haven't qualified. And as you can see, the weather isn't looking very good. Yes, I turned on the weather for this particular race because the pits are kind of working on this circuit, so I thought, why the hell not? And we are off. And we can already see some cars losing their wings. I see body parts flying all over the circuit up in front I'm not sure who it is yet but we have some retirements there is a Ferrari uh, there on at the side of the road well 
at, in the middle of the road. That was actually Clare Gazzoni, so he is out of the race. But I also saw a green um, wing. Uh, I'm not quite sure whose it is, but we will probably find out sooner or later, maybe, as we are trying to chase after Clare Gazzoni. And there is a car at the side of the road that's Dan and Gurney. So he is out of the race and we move up into 30F as we chase down after Roy. Hopefully we'll be able to catch him as we come out of that right-hander coming up through this left-hander. And there are wings flying all over the place. The car is going very wide. And Henri Pescarolo is also out of the race. So that's P29 still on the opening lap. And we just overtake Cubartana who is mis missing his wings. So that's quite easy. That was quite an easy maneuver. And we're now looking at Ronnie Peterson. Can we get around him as well as I nearly lose the, the car there? No, we cannot get rid of uh, ahead of him. Not yet, at least, as we come through this double apex right-hander. And that that's a good move done. Can we now overtake Silvio Moser as well as we come out of turn the final corner? Yes, we can. So that's P26. More wings on the side. George Eaton, they're very slow, so is Silvio Moser and Johnny Servas Gavem. We move up into P24. A few s slow cars on the straight there, but uh, things are going well, I guess. This is lap 2, obviously, and we just overtake Joe Sifford for P23. And we're now looking at Mario Andretti, who is right in front of us. He uh, He's also missing a wing, but wings, but Joe Sifford manages to overtake us on the uh, inside there, so uh, I tried to kind of outbreak him, but I ended up outbreaking myself. I crashed into the railing there, but and that causes me to lose quite a few positions. But a few seconds later, I managed to catch up to Cubartana, and that P27. Can we gain more positions as yes, we can? We overtake Silvio Moser for 26th, and we're looking at Ronnie Peterson once again. And as we come out of the final corner, Chris Amon was sideways on the track and he's out of the race. As we move move past quite a few cars, can we overtake Ronnie Peterson? Yes, we can. That's P20. We have outbreak Pierce Courage into turn one and that's P19. Doing very well here on lap three of the Spanish Grand Prix. Can we catch up to Johnny Servoz Gavin as well? Yes, we can. And we are now trying to get around him as we come through this left-handers and that's a very well done maneuver and uh, Adamish, Sifford, Moser and Courage w retired on this lap so those are the retirements for this lap Unfortunate again unfortunately I cannot really show you those I cannot show you those replays but oh well moving on to lap 4 now and we caught up to Peter Gesson and we're trying to get around him coming through this left-hander and that's a pretty easily done maneuver. Uh, Hubert Hanna retired on lap 4, so that is a thing, I guess. But we are now in P16 and doing quite well. Coming around to finish lap 4 and a few cars peel off into the pits, but they will not be stopping. They will just be driving really, really fast through the pits. And we move up into P15 as we outbreak Jackie X coming into the corner into turn 1. At least try to outbreak. Jackie X, however, I ended up outbreaking myself and well, ended up at, at the, up at the side of the track. But we regain control quite easily, and as we overtake Peter Geffen once again for P16. Lap 5 here. Can we catch up to Bruce McLaren as well at some point? That would be very nice as we now start lap 6. We overtake Bruce McLaren, so we move into P15, and we're looking at John 30 as I nearly lose control of the car coming into turn one there a little bit later on and we try to make a move on John 30s for P14 and that's a pretty easily done maneuver and we're now chasing after Brabham lap 7 and Jackie Stewart is out of the race at this point so that's a thing I guess as we're still trying to overtake for P14 that's John Miles right in front of us in the Lotus can we overtake him Yes, we can, and there is Surtees at the Stewart, sorry, at the side of the road. So, yeah, he's out of the race as we're still struggling here to get around John Miles. We put it on the inside, and that's a 
fairly easily done maneuver. Can we now overtake Jackie X as well? As we start lap 8 here, we outbreak X into turn 1 and that is P10 doing quite well. Next up is Danny Holm as we come through this left hander. He goes a bit wide and that's P9 done. Next up is Soler Reig. Maybe we can overtake him at some point. That would be quite nice. However, Danny Holm manages to overtake us on the outside. So I try to keep close to him and see if I can overtake him through this tight left hander. Not quite, but I have a better exit out of the corner than he does and that's P9 once again. So doing well, we are now slotting in behind Soler Reich, so hopefully we'll be able to overtake him as well. As we come out of the final corner, he peels off into the pits, slows down just a little bit and we make, make it up into P8. Lap 9 now and we just overtake, we just overtake Jokan Rind for P7 and we overtake Hill as well for P6, so we're now in the points which is absolutely fantastic. Jackie Oliver is right ahead of us as we come out of the final corner to finish lap 10. And that's P5 now, which is absolutely fantastic. As we're taking, we have a back marker in front of us. He should let us pass though easily. And we're coming around to finish lap 11 now. And Emerson Fittipaldi is kind of slow on the straight. We make a move on him and that's P4. And we're doing very, very well. However, he manages to break us into turn one. So he regains a position, but only for a fraction of a second as we regain P4. As we have better drive out of the corner, and that's P4. Danny Holm and Johnny Servoz Gavan managed to retire on this race. I'm not quite sure how, but again, they are out. Lap 13 now, and we overtake Pedro Rodriguez. So that's. P3, and, which is absolutely fantastic, and we're now taking a look at Jean-Pierre Beltois. Can we overtake him as well? Yes, we can. So that's P2. Only Ignacio Junti left, and we can move into the lead as we come through the B Bugatti S's. We try to put it on the inside, and that's P1. Very well done. We're now in the lead of the Spanish Grand Prix, which is absolutely fantastic, obviously. Hopefully we can hold on to this lead. Lap 16 and Jackie X retired from the race as we try to pull away from Ignacio Junti. And coming around to finish lap 17, I managed to post the fastest lap of the race, which is quite nice, although it's not a new track record that belongs to I'm not quite sure who. Uh, on lap 19, Beltois retired as I'm struggling here with some back markers. Then on lap 20, Andretti and Ethan retired. So, adding to the casualties. Lap 24 now and Surtees is also out of the race. As we continue to pull away from Ignacio Junti, the track is still wet. Lap 27 and Ronnie Peterson is out as well. And the gap to Junti is increasing, which is obviously very good. Lap 28 and Graham Hill is out of the race and on lap 29 Ignacio Junti retired for whatever reason and here we are coming around to finish lap 31 and win the Spanish Grand Prix Oliver's first win it was kind of a, an easy win to be honest but anyway Pedro Rodriguez finished the second rint third fourth Fittipaldi fifth Brabham and Oliver was sixth we obviously managed to post the fastest lap of the race which is quite nice and here are the retirements quite a few people retired in fact, the more than 50% of uh, the participants retired from the race, so that is something, I guess. Uh, and once again, I'm quite disappointed that I was unable to show you any replays, but for some reason the ga game keeps crashing when I'm trying to load the replay file. But anyway, let's move on. And here are the career statistics. This was Oliver's second Grand Prix. His best artist from 30th, has no pole positions, has set one fastest lap, his best finishes in first, has completed two races, both of them in the points, has won one Grand Prix, hasn't won in Monaco yet, hasn't won a championship either, has scored a total of 11 points, hasn't retired yet, has experienced 57 out of 59 laps, has no bronze trophies, 
no silver trophies, one gold trophy and as an extension one podium. And here are the driver's standings. Oliver Higgs moves into the lead of the driver's championship with Piers Carriage in second, Hubertana and Pedro Rodriguez sharing third, Peter de Klerk and Jochen Rent sharing fifth. The last person with points is Jackie Oliver down in 10th and bringing up the bottom of the driver standings is John Surtees down in 33rd. So those are the drivers. Let's now move on to the constructors where we have Pete Lovely Volkswagen Incorporated moving into the lead of the championship with Frank Williams racing cars in second, Hubert Hanna racing and Yardley team BRM sharing third, team Gunston and Goldleaf team Lotus sharing fifth. The last team with points are Brabham Motor Racing Development in eighth and bringing up the bottom of the constructor standings are Team 30s down in 19th. So that was the Spanish Grand Prix, a good result for Oliver and Volkswagen, but uh, it wasn't a very good race, I mean, well, I don't know. There were 12 people who finished the race, so it was better than the South African Grand Prix, so to that extent, you know, I actually had to do well in order to get to where I did, but I think the AI was a little bit weird. And I didn't quite understand why the AI kept going through the pits. And don't get it wrong, the AI would have done it regardless of the weather conditions. I actually tested this out and for whatever reason, some of the AI like to drive through the pits on the circuit. So, uh, yeah, they're not stopping, they're not doing anything, they're just driving full speed through the pits. So, yeah, that is a thing, I guess. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what else to say about this. Obviously, I'm kind of happy that Oliver is leading the championship at this point, but, you know, I would have liked it a little bit more if there was, you know, I had to push a little bit harder. It was a little bit easy to get into the lead, to be frank, but, oh well, whatever. Anyway, our next race is the Monaco Grand Prix. Hopefully, we'll be able to do decently there as well. Obviously, Andy won quite a handful of times in Monaco, so I think Oliver should try to do his best to equal his father, right? <laughs> but yeah, that is the end of this video, so don't forget to vote for next season's team, link is in the description. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, thank you all so much for watching, and as always, stay sharp!